Now, this business about a rise in hate crime, 17% rise in hate crime in 2017 compared to 2016. But the FBI, in its news release allowing, uh, announcing the 2017 hate crime stats, said this, quote, although the numbers increased last year, so did the number of law enforcement agencies reporting hate crime data with approximately 1,000 additional agencies contributing information. The FBI also said this, quote, next year, FBI personnel will provide training for law enforcement officers on how to identify bias-motivated incidents and report the data to the FBI's UCR, which stands for Uniform Crime Reports. Additionally, the DOJ launched a new hate crimes webpage, which has information on law enforcement on reporting incidents. End of quote. In other words, we're now having an additional 1,000 agencies contribute who never contributed before. Even PolitiFact examined whether there's a rise in hate crimes. Here's what they said. Quote, the picture is more nuanced. Some of the increase, especially in cities with very low numbers before, was a result of more rigorous reporting. End of quote. And a Kentucky State University professor named Wilfred Riley, we interviewed him, wrote a book called Hate Crime Hoax. He says the uptick is an aberration due to the increased agencies reporting. Quote, almost all the surge is due to the simple fact that in 2017, the number of police departments reporting hate crimes to the FBI increased by 1,000. The surge narrative is pretty dishonest. End of quote. It's a lie. And it's being pushed by CNN and MSNB, which I watched that you don't have to. It's a lie. And again, new paper, two researchers, been tracking attitudes of whites for years, 500 of them. And they just knew that because of Trump from 2016 on, these 500 white people would be far more likely to express negative views of blacks, negative views of, his, of Hispanics. And they admitted that they anticipated that their research would confirm their suspicion. They also admitted they were wrong and they were surprised. White's willingness to express negative attitudes about blacks and about Hispanics declined, didn't increase, declined. Now, they're not sure why. And I'm not sure why. All I know is it's a lie that racism is on the rise here. It's a lie. The percentage of people that oppose interracial marriage, all-time low. Meanwhile, interracial marriage exploding from 3% in 67, 1967 to 17% in 2015. Sixty-three percent of non-black adults in 1990, sixty-three percent opposed to having a close relative marry somebody who's black. You know what that number now is? Fourteen percent. We're getting pretty close to the Elvis factor, almost ten percent. The share of people who oppose marriages <laughs> with Asian and Hispanic people also dropped Sorry, that better? Yeah. from 20% to only 10% now. Among those who are not white, the share opposed to a relative marrying a white person has declined from 7% in 1990 to 4% now. More than a quarter of Asian newlyweds and Latino newlyweds are married to a spouse of a different race or ethnicity. And those rates go up even higher for those born in the United States. 46 for Asian newlyweds, 39% for Hispanic newlyweds. And that group comprises people who are born here. Hi guys. For non-black newly for black newlyweds, tripled since 1980, from five percent to 18 percent. For white newlyweds, the rate has tripped as uh, has gone from four percent to 11 percent over the same period.
Where's the outrage about what's happening in Chicago with all the coverage of Dayton, with all the coverage of El Paso, because they can bludgeon Trump with that and they can make it political. Four people killed 52 shot this weekend alone. There have been over 1,600 shooting incidents, over 20 some odd, uh, 2,000 people shot in 2019. Why don't they ever talk about that? Let's see why. Because Democrats own Chicago, their politics for decades. Where's the national nonstop coverage? Where's the outrage? Where's the concern for people? Well, the violence in those Democratic run cities, that doesn't advance their anti Trump narrative. They can't bludgeon Trump with the statistics. So why talk about it? And with reaction, Salem, nationally syndicated radio host Larry Elder, author of Why We Fight, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, also a syndicated radio host. You know, Larry, I, I look at this and we talk about it all the time. They don't care about Russian interference if it's Hillary. They don't care about obstruction if it's Hillary. Those were slam dunk cases. They don't care about sexual assault if it's a Democrat lieutenant governor of Virginia, only if it's Kavanaugh and they can bludgeon Trump. So it's not the issues that they care about. It's the political weaponization that they care about. Well, that's right. Uh, dead young black boys in the inner city uh, is not newsworthy as far as the left is concerned. Uh, on CNN a couple of years ago, Sean, there was a reality-based series called Chicago Land, where they followed around a principal of an urban high school in Chicago on the south side called Finger High. She and her staff, Sean, were literally mapping out routes to and from school uh, on, for maps that they would pass out to the students to advise them the best and most safe routes to pass through going to and from school so they don't get killed by gangs. Now, I don't think they're worried about white nationalists or white supremacists. They're worried about young black boys killing other young black boys. That's what the problem here is going on in this country. And you can't blame it on the laws. You can't get much tougher laws on, on guns in Chicago than they already have. You can't blame it on politicians not caring. There's now a black mayor. Uh, the head of the police department now is a black guy. So you can't say the politicians don't care. You have to look for the source. And the source is the breakdown of the family. And the left does not want to talk about that because their liberal policies have helped to create the problem in the very first place. How about vouchers? So if you live near that high school, you don't have to send your kid to a school where the teacher is mapping out routes to and from so you don't get shot by gangs. How about giving parents an option out of underperforming government school? 13 high schools in Baltimore, Sean, 0% are math proficient. Zero. Zero percent. Zero math proficient. Zero. Zero. None. 13 yeah. separate high schools. That is it's unconscionable. Mm -hmm. We owe our children, our family, better than this. And they don't seem to care. Thank you both. Thank you. 